Selling clip art on Etsy can be really profitable with several listings on this page alone, ranging from a couple hundred dollars a month to even thousands of dollars a month in profit. However, we also know that they can be extremely time consuming to create and honestly kind of a pain in the butt when it comes to being able to create them first with a good prompt that works across all of your different types of subjects that are going to be in your clip art pack, as well as then getting into upsell scaling them and removing the background and saving them. So in this video, I wanted to show you how I am now creating my clip art. I know I've made a couple clip art videos on this channel before, but this is my most recent way as far as my process goes and trying to get it done all in one place. If you are new to the channel, I am Bailey, the owner of Bailey Design Co, a seven figure digital product shop on Etsy. And I now teach others how to create the same types of shops on this channel and in my online community. So the first important part about creating your clip art pack is to make sure that you have a central theme that all of the subjects of your clip art will fall under. So for example, what I mean is um, this red cupcake Valentine um, set right here is obviously a Valentine's theme with a bunch of cupcakes. So the trends are kind of cross niched here as far, not trends, the niches are kind of crossed with the cupcakes, so sweets, and then the central theme of Valentine's. If we look down here more, we have these like delicious treats one, we have quirky hearts. So there is always a theme with this one. We have like retro groovy is the style, and then it has all types of elements that could be considered retro or groovy. Um, this one is bows. This one is, these are individual, but you can also put them up individually um, and then put combine them into their clip art set if you are trying to get more traffic. Here is another type of sweets or bakery type. Here is another one as well. And since I'm seeing a lot of these sweets or bakery or pastry type clip art sets, I'm going to create mine this way because, or create a set like this because I actually saw the keyword in E-Rank as well. So that gives me an indication that there is a lot of search for this right now and there are showing up on the front page. And also if I go down here, there's quite a bit more. So again, just make sure that you have a theme that you are going to create these all in. So for me, I'm going to create them in a pastel shade. They're going to be watercolor um, and I'll basically call it good as far as the style goes. So once you have your theme in mind, as well as the type of niche or set that you are going to create, it's time to go ahead and create your prompt. So for this, I left it fairly simple. It is just a watercolor hand-drawn clip art of, and then I have the shades of colors, and then I have the subject. And so then really it's just a little bit of follow-up information describing the type of dessert that I'm going to be creating. And then I've just duplicated it several times. This is important because I just wanna be able to copy and paste this. You can totally have ChatGPT copy and paste this for you into multiple different types of treats or dogs, let's say if you were doing that type, or maybe it's a book themed or like live librarian type set. So you could have ChatGPT write it for you so that you're not copying, pasting and changing it out as long as you have the central focus of your prompt. And then that is really all that I need at this point. So my next step is just to copy and paste all of my prompts and then I'm going to head over to my designs. So in my designs, I've just clicked on Dream AI, which is right here. And then I'm going to make sure that I delete my last one out of there and then make sure that I have parallel prompts toggled on. This means it's going to allow me to run multiple prompts all at once. And then I'm just going to select the image generator that I want. So my designs is really great because it has a ton of AI models already built in. So I typically choose Dolly 3 and then I want to make sure that my quality is HD just because there tends to be lots of issues when it's under standard. It will use less prompts, but honestly, you'll end up having to do a lot of work editing. So it's just worth it to pay more prompts and do the HD version. So then I'm just going to click on dream. And in a few minutes, I'm going to have a wide variety of different clip arts that I can use in my set 
With the Dolly 3 that I chose, I do get two images. Um, I could toggle that down to one if I wanted it, but a lot of times I end up using both and then that way my clip art um, set is that much bigger because most of them will turn out correct. Okay, so now that those have generated in just a few seconds, we're gonna go through what we have. A lot of these you'll see, even though I had the prompt saying isolated on a white background and using clip art, will still do this with um, my designs and Dolly. There are several other AI image generators out there that will do this a little bit better, but I like the results of Dolly. And since I already use my designs, I like to use it as much as possible. And for these ones where it ends up being cut off like this, I will often still use these and just fix them in Photoshop later. But for the purposes of creating a clip art pack really quickly, these are ones that I will just save for either a tumbler later or maybe part of another design where it can easily be fixed. So all I'm going to do at this point is grab the ones that can be used, meaning that they don't have anything cut off on the sides. And so I'm moving down towards here. This one will work. These both will work here on the macarons. This little strawberry shortcake one will work. I will have a lot of extras to be able to put into a whole tumbler at some point. Both of these waffles will work and are super cute. This iced coffee one looks really good. These cupcakes look perfect. These ice creams almost made it on either side. This ice cream works and this one works. So those two worked fine. I did end up running this again just to get as many results as I could. So that's why you're seeing more of these cookies turned out perfect. Another little strawberry shortcake. These lollipops actually ended up being fine. And so did these coffee cups, these pop tarts, and uh, these s'mores look fine. Okay, so I wound up with 18 listings or 18 images, so that works perfectly. So my next step is to come up here and save those images to listings. So all I'm going to do right now is answer these questions. So upscale options for PNG only. I'm going to upscale them and I'm going to upscale them to the max of 4096 by 4096, which is plenty big enough for clip art. Then I'm going to save it to a collection and I am going to just put it under remove background, which is just what I've titled where I put all of these types of listings if I'm doing this. So I'm going to click remove background and then I'm going to create a new listing because I want them to create a new listing or an individual for them. And then I will just put them in a new slot, which is right here. I will explain this a little bit further when we get over to the listings tab. And then I'm just going to click on save to listings. It will ask you, um, do you know you're going to remove the background, which will cost so many credits? And do you want to continue? Yes, store the images. Okay, so now that we're over here in the listing side, we're just going to select all of them so that it selects all of the 18. And then we're gonna go up here to quick actions, which is right here. So we already upscaled the image. Now we're going to remove the background, which is right here. And then I'm going to select the slot that I'm choosing from. So right now it is in the new slot that I put them in. And then the output slot is where it's going to wind up. So I'm just going to select slot number three, which is right here. And then you can select the model um, of the background remover. So I use the 1.5, which is just a better background remover. Um, it will cost 1.5 credits versus the other one, but it does work better. So then I'll just go ahead and remove the background. It again will ask if you want to, and then it will start doing its thing, which will just take a couple of seconds, and then we'll be good to download these. Okay, and so once that's finished, you can kind of see here in the slot number three that it has a transparent background. So a lot of them will show like the little gray and white checkered background, and then some of them will actually just show the image like this one right here. And so that means that they're good to go. This one is missing, so it's still coming through, but this is one that has like 
the little lollipops are just showing on a black background. So my next step is now just to go ahead and download all of these at once. So you'll keep your little box selected here and then click download files. Then you'll want to make sure you select the slot that you want to download. So we only want to download the number three slot and then you can have it do it as a zip file or not. Um, and then really it's just based on this file name. As far as the naming, I end up changing it anyway um, because they would just be called number three if it goes by the file name and I really don't care about that. We are not pushing these over. I don't personally use my designs to push these over to Etsy. Though you could, um, I have not ever set up a clip art set because there's multiple and they would have to be bundled up. And I like to create the mock-up separately in something like Canva. And so it just makes it a lot easier just to download them all at once and just change the name depending on what these are actually or what you've actually created. So now that I have them all downloaded, I've just extracted all of them and then I'm going to actually pull them into Photoshop to do any minor edits that I might need to do. This usually takes me about five to 10 minutes depending on how I chose them in the first place. So for the example purposes of this video, I did not choose any again that had the sides cut off just because I didn't wanna mess around with this. Though some of them might have some of the background removed where it wasn't supposed to, or I was gonna add something like some final text to it or something like that. It also needs to be moved into Photoshop because I need to make sure that the DPI is 300. So over here in Photoshop, I've just opened up my canvas to the 4,000 by 4,000. Actually, I take that back. I use the 5,000 by 5,000. Um, just to try and stretch it out a little bit right here. And I do already have these as presets. So it is just a one-to-one -one square. And then I'll just drop, start dropping these in here and make sure that you uh, remove your background on your layer here so that it is still transparent. So this one looks um, pretty good. Actually, there's nothing where like the white got removed that I would need to fill back in or any type of splashes or anything like that that I would need to fix. So at this point, I would just save it um, as the name of the file. So personally, when I create a clip art pack, I will just name it something that is easily recognizable by a customer when they're purchasing it so that they're not searching around for like all types of random numbers trying to figure figure out which one was the waffles and which one was the ice cream cone. If I do have multiple say of waffle stacks, I will do a waffle stack number one and that is it. Okay, so where a lot of people go wrong with clip art is not necessarily the creation part because with the AI, it's super easy and super fast as you saw to actually create our bundles. The problem that most people run into is the mockups. So if you take a look at most of these mockups on this front page of the Etsy search results for this particular term, you'll see that the mockups are often overlapped, very busy essentially. They show a lot of the product versus being very like widely spaced out. And so I think that that is really important to know when you are creating your mockup. There are a few mockup generators out there for clip art, however, they do not lay them out the way that they should be laid out, which is essentially like what most of these sellers have done. As you can see, like on this one here, it's very much overlaid. So they're not all like squished out so that they're all separate so that you see that all individually. That can be shown on a separate listing photo or even in the video, but they tend to just show a lot of the images, even if part of them are cut off, to show as much of the individual images as possible. Another important thing to note with the mock-up image is that you wanna be clear with what it is. So you have 20 PNG and then it's a clip art bundle and then the type of bundle. So usually if you have those three things, you will be good to go. So that is the amount of PNGs included 
what the particular style or niche set is, so watercolor dogs, and then clip art bundle. So over here in Canva, which is where I still make mine, I have added all of my images. Some of them didn't come through, so I'll have to go back through. But then my next step is just to kind of layer them all really in a cute fashion to show as much of them as possible because it essentially gives the customer like, like they're getting more or that they're just being able to see a lot of the great images that we've already designed. So I'm just kind of, I always put my um, title here. So as you can see, pastel desserts and treats, clip art bundle, 18 PNG. And then I'm just going to basically fill out the remainder of the area with all of my little images. Okay, and so here is my final mock-up main photo listing. As you can see, I've just layered as many of them as I possibly can. I know that it looks really busy, but they seem to convert best. I also went ahead and changed the colors to match the color palette just because it looks better than black. Though, as you saw on the listings page of Etsy, a lot of people just keep them black and put like a watercolor splash behind them. You can totally do that as well. That matches the kind of overall aesthetic or the theme of the bundle. So that really works well. Then additionally, what I would do if I were creating this is then go in individually and add them in so that they are bigger in rows of three like they have done and even rows of just two, um, just so that people can get a really, really close view of the individual clip art images themselves. You can also show them on real life mockups, such as like if it's for a shirt or if it's for a coffee mug, if it makes sense. I wouldn't necessarily go and put them on a bunch of what would be typically print on demand products if it doesn't make sense for the type of clip art that you're creating. I wouldn't see like cupcakes or um, bakery things like the ones that I just did being on a shirt alone without some type of saying or quote. So it works just to go ahead and add them as just flat lays where they're just shown up closer so that there's a lot of detail that can be shown to them. Do be sure to check out my 2025 trends video here. If you are looking for the types of styles and design trends that will be popping up in 2025 that you can apply to your clip art sets like these. And I will see you all in the next video.